Hey everyone, Dave from BC Bushcraft. Today I wanted to go over what I believe to be the two best budget bushcraft knives that you can buy. So knife number one that I'm going to cover is the Mora Companion and I highly suggest any version of the Mora Companion whether it's the heavy duty uh, or not the heavy duty or the stainless steel versions. They're all great starter knives that come at a really really reasonable price. You can probably pick one of these up for around $20 Canadian. I've seen them cheaper in hunting stores for the heavy duty ones even. And uh, if you want to get it on Amazon, you know, they're maybe just over $20, $20, $23 or something like that, Canadian. And it's definitely a really good entry level knife for the price. It's probably the best knife you're gonna get uh, for the cheapest price possible. And then the next knife I want to cover is the Condor Bushlore, which I believe to be also a really, really top notch budget knife that you can get that is perfect for bushcraft. So this is probably around $55 for the wooden handle version. I have the micarta handle version and I think I picked it up for $67 Canadian. Um, the prices have probably definitely changed since I've purchased this. So if you can find it for uh, around $55 for the wood version Canadian, that's uh, around the price you should be paying for it. So I'm gonna compare these knives against each other and give my thoughts on why you should or shouldn't purchase uh, one or the other and why these knives I think are the best, the two best, very best budget knives that you can get for bushcraft. Okay, so taking a closer look at either blade, there's a few things that I like about these blades and why I think they're in the category of the two best uh, budget bushcraft knives that you can get. So uh, let's start with the, the grind of each knife. The Scandinavian grind is definitely the grind that you wanna go for bushcraft. It excels at wood tasks. It excels at carving, um, which is the majority of what you're gonna be doing with bushcraft. So each of them have feature a Scandinavian grind, which is quite important. Uh, if you're a hunter, uh, th these knives won't process your game as well. You'll you'll be fine processing things like trout. Uh, I I mean, the only game that I have processed personally with either one of these knives is fish, and they've done a fine job but things like deer and stuff like that, I probably wouldn't suggest these knives, but um, I'm not uh, considering uh, these knives for that type of thing. I probably have a different knife for uh, if I was hunting and uh, I was processing a deer. Regardless, for bushcraft, uh, which is basically, you're gonna be doing a lot of carving, you're gonna be doing a lot of wood tasks, you're gonna be making tent pegs, you're gonna be uh, shaping things and maybe making spoons or anything like that. It's definitely the Scandinavian grind is the best way to go. So each one of these features a Scandinavian grind, which is important. Another thing is, is that the, the length of the blade, they're roughly four inches long. The Condor Bushlore is over four inches. I think it's a four, four and a, what is it? Four and a quarter, four and a third or something long. And then uh, the more companion is just under four inches, I believe. That's about the ideal size for a bushcraft knife uh, in a, a wooded environment. If you're in a jungle or something like that, these knives, it's gonna be different. So uh, I live in B BC, Canada, British Columbia, Canada, uh, you know, the alone show, the, the, you know, th these are the kind of knives that you would want for that environment. So because you're, you're usually gonna be bringing an ax and maybe even a saw with you, that's why these knives are chosen, so. Moving on, another really key feature to your uh, bushcraft knives is the thickness of your blade itself. So uh, this Condor Bushler is three millimeters thick or roughly an eighth of an inch thick. Well, the more companion, this one is two millimeters thick. The heavy duty, I think it's upwards of around 2.6 millimeters thick or something like that. So anything between two millimeters to three millimeters, that is the ideal thickness for a bushcraft knife you do not want to be purchasing something that is like a quarter of an inch thick because you're going to have a lot more resistance when you're trying to carve wood and things like that. You do not need a knife that is a quarter of an inch thick if you're using axes and saws and things like that. Uh, a knife that is three millimeters thick, like the Condor Bushler, is plenty enough and it's not going to break unless you're treating this knife uh, how it's not supposed to be treated. Sorry for the noise of my dog. <laughs> so. Moving forward, uh, the handles are roughly four inches to four and a half inches long. Uh, I think uh, 
the overall lengths are between eight inches to 10 inches. That's kind of the ideal size and just giving you a general idea of uh, what size of these knives are. You can kind of see how they fit in my hand, which is quite important too. Okay, so now that we got the size and the thickness out of the way, you can kind of see that these knives are generally the, the around the same size and uh, you know, the extra half inch or so or a quarter of an inch, third of an inch, uh, doesn't matter too much. You're just gonna be able to baton a little bit more with the condor bush floor. Uh, something that you have to note too when you're buying a bushcraft knife and uh, specifically these two knives is that the condor bush floor is full tang and the more companion is rat tail tang, which means the metal kind of only comes up to somewhere around here in the handle and it, it kind of tapers into like a rat tail basically. So uh, you can kind of Google search images on what it actually looks like if you would like to. And basically that's gonna mean that the condor bushler is a stronger knife in general uh, than the more companion. With that being said, you shouldn't be breaking this knife. Pretty much if you break your more companion, it means you're using it wrong. So uh, if I mean, if you're gonna be beating on a knife and stuff, um, you know, you're not doing bushcraft really. So there's no, there's no reason for you to be breaking this knife anyways. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. It should take, uh, you know, batoning, like batoning wood this long, uh, this knife shouldn't break anyways. And, uh, you know, this knife here, you're not going to break it by batoning. You're not really going to break it by prying or anything like that. It's uh, it's just a, kind of a beefy knife. Also something to consider is the metal. Condor Bushler is 1075, so it's a little bit softer than the Mora Companion, which is a sandbike steel, which they have a proprietorship thing on it, I believe. Uh, it's equivalent to probably 1095, so you should get a little bit more better edge retention on the Mora Companions, actually, than you are going to on the uh, Condor Bushler. I don't really notice a difference between the two, to be honest. I end up sharpening these equally. So the 1075 in the, car, uh, the Bushler isn't something to throw you off. Uh, the knife will be sharp enough. It will be sharp by the end of the day of full use and it will require stropping just like the more companion. So there's not much difference there. The handles are both quite ergonomic. The rubberized grip definitely gives you a better um, hold onto the knife than the micarta does. Uh, but that doesn't mean that this isn't a solid grip either. Uh, Bushlore is a little bit bigger of a handle and it's a little bit thicker. It's a little bit meatier. It's a beefier knife. Uh, if you have big hands, this is definitely the knife to go with. Uh, it has a, a really good swell compared to a lot of different other knives in this price range or even expensive knives. It has a nice big handle, which is quite important actually. It's, it's ergonomic. You're not going to get hot spots uh, on either one of these handles, but uh, the more companion is thinner. If you have big hands, it, you will notice it, that it does feel a little thin. I notice it even. It is a little bit thin when I'm doing carving. I do kind of miss the, the feel of the bush lore. So, uh, if, I mean, this could probably compare to some 100 to $200 knives as far as performance and also outperform some expensive custom knives for sure. Just because it's very simple in design, there's no sharp edges or hot spots. It has a drop point, which is, a, you know, it's, it's a nice looking knife too. And a lot of the expensive knives that you see, uh, there's actually, you know, the handles are too thin or they have aggressive jimping or there's sharp points or there's choils where there shouldn't be. So this knife will outperform those knives and you won't pay the price. And that's why I've chosen it as uh, one of the best budget bushcraft knives for sure. So now that I've kind of given you a rundown on each knife, I'll go through the sheaths very quickly. The Condor Bushler leather sheath is awesome. Uh, it definitely adds to the value of the knife. When you're paying like 60 bucks for a knife and you get this leather sheath, it's a really sweet deal. It's really nice thick leather. It does have stitching and um, does have rivets. I do wish that the belt loop was stitched, but it is only riveted, which is okay. It probably shouldn't break, but it's something that might um, not last as long as the stitching. That's okay though. Um, this is a great quality sheath for, for the price you're getting. Like I said, you can buy a hundred to two hundred dollar knives, and they come with nylon, which is which is ridiculous. In my opinion, you know, you should be getting leather or Kydex if you're paying that price. So uh, for the price, this is an amazing sheath. And again, for the more companion for a $20 knife, this hard plastic sheath is pretty sweet. Uh, I, it, it definitely beats a lot of knives at this price range. Uh, it's, 
you know, the retention isn't the best, but there's no reason why you should lose your knife unless you're doing some hardcore stuff. Uh, it does have a drain hole, which the leather sheath doesn't feature, but if you wanted to, you could always drill a tiny hole in the back here if you really wanted to have a drain hole. I do like the belt clip. You shouldn't break this unless you're stupid. Uh, I often clip this onto my pocket and not my belt, so it actually hangs a little bit lower, and I really like that about this knife. Um, the way that I carry it, I like it's comfortable and it's out of the way. So the sheath is really good for the price and it's also a lot better in water than a leather sheath will ever be. So if you get the stainless steel version of the Mora Companion and with this sheath, uh, you're kind of golden as far as wet environments go or if you're around the ocean or if you fall in the water, uh, this knife is going to be better for that. So overall, if I only had to choose one knife and the price didn't matter which one is the better knife, I would choose the Condor Bushler. I do like it. I do like the handle. The handle is a big deal to me. This is the one of the nicest handles that I actually have. Uh, it's super comfortable and I think that's why people love this knife is the, the handle is just done right. Uh, you know the blade shape is, is perfect for bushcraft and it, it's the right thickness. So full tang as well. You're getting a little bit sturdier of a knife. You can do some chopping tasks. That's why I have this lanyard on it so I can kind of put my fingers on like that and I can do some light chopping tasks with this, knock off branches off of uh, bigger poles and things like that. If I don't uh, want to go reach for my axe, I can whip this out, knock off a few branches really easily. I like that feature about this knife. You can't really do that with the Mora Companion. Uh, it doesn't have the weight to it. Uh, it doesn't have a lanyard hole, but you can make one if you want to. You can drill through that hard plastic. But that also is an advantage of the Mora Companion is that it is lightweight. So if you do want to save weight, uh, this knife is definitely the weight saver. It has the rat tail tang, so you don't have extra metal in here. Uh, the bush lure the, is handle heavy, so the balance isn't perfect. And uh, that's something to consider. If you're going for weight, uh, the Mora Companion is definitely the better one for weight. So... But regardless, overall, if I had to choose one of them, I would choose the Bushlore. I do like it more. So that's just my opinion. But uh, there's lots of reasons to choose the Companion too. And price is one so of I them. I do hope you enjoyed this video, kind of reviewing what I think are the two best budget bushcraft knives that you can get. Um, if you're just going for something quite cheap and you want to get like best thing for the money, it's the more Companion. If you're willing to spend like the extra money, the Condor Bushlore is such a safe option. And you'll learn a lot about knives by getting either one or both of these knives like I did. I learned a lot about what I liked about knives by purchasing these knives. So even if you have expensive knives, uh, if you have 50 bucks lying around, buy the Bushlore and beat on it. And, you know, just test it out because it is it is a nice knife and you'll realize like, wow, like I don't have to spend like 200 bucks for a quality knife nowadays. So to wrap it all up, I hope you like this video. This is Dave from BC Bushcraft. Please like, please subscribe, and comment. I have a few more videos coming up. Um, if you want to go check them out, go check them out. So until the next video, I hope you guys have a good day.